In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the microscopic structural analysis of nanomaterials part 2. So, first what are the types? Already in if you remember that in our last lecture, we have already discussed about the electron probe characterization techniques and the optical imaging probe characterization techniques. In this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about the scanning probe characterization techniques and the ion particle probe characterization techniques. And another two will be left which we are going to discuss in our next lecture. So, first what is scanning probe characterization techniques? So, generally the STM scanning tunneling microscopy which will give you the information about the topology imaging or maybe the surface structure, AFM atomic force microscopy, topology or maybe the imaging or maybe the surface structure. Then the last one is XPS, this is the latest technology or maybe the latest characterizations. So, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy which will give you the surface analysis of that particular materials. First we are going to discuss about the scanning tunneling microscopy STM. So, STM is a powerful microscopical technique that allows the investigation of electrically conducting surface down to the atomic scale. It uses a single atom tip to attain atomic resolution. Atomic resolution has several orders of magnitude better than best electron microscope. STM based on the concept of quantum tunneling, how it is taking place. What is tunneling effect? It is a phenomenon of where a particle tunnels through a barrier that it classically could not surmount. Variations in tunneling current as the probe passes over the surface are translated into an image. They normally generate image by holding the current between the tip of electrode and the specimen at some constant value by using a piezoelectric crystals to adjust the distance between tip and the specimen surface. So, automatically it will maintain a constant gap over there. What is the working principle? When a conducting tip is brought very near to a metallic or semiconducting surface to be examined, a bias applied between the two can allow electrons to tunnel through the vacuum between them. So, this is taking place. The resulting tunneling current is a function of tip position, applied voltage and local density of states of the sample itself. Information is acquired by monitoring the current as the tip's position scans across the surface and monitored in image form. So, this is the sample and this is the probe. So, generally it moves like this. So, five basic components metal tip, piezoelectric scanner, current amplifier, bipotentiostat and the feedback loop. What are the advantages? STMs are versatile, they can be used in ultra high vacuum air water and other liquids and gases. STMs give three dimensional profile of a surface which allows researcher to examine a multi multitude of characteristics including roughness, surface defects and the molecular size, lateral resolution of 0 0.1 nanometer and 0 0.01 nanometer of resolution in depth can be achieved. Of course, there are certain disadvantages. It is very expensive, it needs specific training to operate effectively, STM need very clean surface, excellent vibration control while operation and the single atom tip. So, here this is the highly oriented pyrolytic graphite sheet under the STM. So, lateral resolution is here 0 0.1 nanometer and the depth resolution is 0 0.01 nanometer. Next is called the atomic force microscopy or in short it is known as AFM. AFM is invented by G. Binning and H. Rohrer in the year of 1981. It is a very high resolution type of scanning probe microscopy. Resolution on the order of fractions of a nanometer, it senses interatomic forces that occur between a probe tip and a substrate. How AFM works? A cantilever tip is put in contact with the surface itself. So, a cantilever tip here it is touching the surface. An ionic repulsive force from the surface when applied to the tip bends the cantilever upwards. Yes, of course, when it is touching, so due to the, its reach pattern, it is going up and down. Amount of bending is measured by laser spot reflected here 
on the detector onto a detector which is used to calculate the ionic force. Scanning the tip across the surface allows vertical movement of the tip to follow the surface profile and is recorded as the surface topography. Generally, there are three modes of AFM operations. First one is called the contact mode in which the probe is touching the surface of the materials. Tip scans in close contact with the surface repelled, constant force, highest resolutions may damage the surface. Second one is called the non-contact mode. Tip hovers above the surface attracted, variable force measured, lowest resolution non-destructive. And the last one is called the tapping mode or maybe the semi-contact mode. Intermediate tip contact, variable force measured, improved resolution non-destructive in nature. What are the advantages? Easy sample preparations, accurate height information, works in vacuum, air and liquids, living systems can be studied. What are the disadvantages? Limited vertical range, limited magnification range, data not independent of tip and the tip or sample can be damaged. Of course, there are certain applications. What are those? Study unfolding of proteins, imaging of biomolecules, force measurement in real solvent environments, antibody antigen binding studies, ligand receptor binding studies, binding force of complementary DNA strands, study surface frictional forces, ion channel localizations. Then next one is called the X-ray photon spectroscopy or maybe the XPS. So, XPS is a quantitative spectroscopic surface chemical analysis techniques. XPS is also known as electron spectroscopy of chemical analysis or in short form it is called the SCA. It is used to estimate the empirical formula or elemental compositions, chemical state and electronic state of elements on the surface up to 10 nanometer of a materials. So, simple X-rays are falling on the orbitals and the photoelectron is removing. So, in this particular case, so it is removing. So, SK is based on the photoelectron effect. So, this effect is called the photoelectron effect. A high energy X-ray photon can ionize an atom producing an ejected free electron with kinetic energy K e. Generally, kinetic energy we are calling it as a K e. So, K e is equal to H nu minus B e, where H nu is the photon energy, B e is the energy necessary to remove a specific electron from an atom or B e is equivalent to the orbital energy. Now, working of XPS. XPS works by irradiating atoms of a surface of any solid material with X-ray while simultaneously measuring the kinetic energy and number of electrons that escape from the top 1 to 10 nanometer of the material being analyzed. XPS is controlled by using a computer system. The instrument uses different pump systems to reach the goal of an ultra high vacuum environment. Ultra high vacuum environment will prevent contamination of surface and aid an accurate analysis of the sample itself. So, generally the component of XPS first is the X-ray source, ion source, SIMS analyzer and the sample introduction chamber. What are the use of the XPS technology? Elements and quantity of those elements that are present within the top 1 to 12 nanometer of the sample surface detects all elements with an atomic number of 3 lithium and above. Hydrogen and helium cannot be detected. It cannot detect hydrogen z is equal to 1 or helium z is equal to 2 because diameter of these orbitals is so small reducing the catch probability to almost 0. Chemical state analysis of surface of polymers readily reveals presence or absence of chemical states of carbon known as carbide, hydrocarbon, alcohol, ketone, organic ester, carbonate, fluorohydrocarbon or maybe trifluorocarbon. Routinely used to analyze inorganic compounds, metal alloys, semiconductors, polymers, catalysts, glasses, ceramics, paints, papers, inks, woods, plant parts, makeup, teeth bones, medical implants, biomaterials, viscous oils, glues, iron modified materials and many others. Organic chemicals are not routinely analyzed by XPS because they are 
readily degraded by either the energy of the X-rays or the heat from non-monochromatic X-ray sources. What are the advantages? Surface sensitive top view monolayers provides information about chemical bonding relatively non-destructive techniques. What are the disadvantages? Very expensive techniques, high vacuum is required, data collection is slow, it is almost 5 to 10 minute. Then next one is the ion particle probe characterization techniques. So, in this particular case we are having four types, one is called the NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, it is generally we are using for analysis of odd number of nuclear species, XRD, X-ray diffractions, crystal structure, we have already discussed XRD in our previous lecture for this particular course. RS, the Raman spectroscopy, it is generally for the vibration analysis and another one is called the SACS, small angle X-ray scattering, surface analysis and the particle sizing generally 1 to 100 nanometer. So, first is called the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or maybe the NMR. NMR is a powerful analytical technique used to characterize organic molecules by identifying the carbon hydrogen frameworks within molecules. It is a research technique that exploits the magnetic properties of certain atomic nuclei. It determines the physical and chemical properties of atoms or molecules in which they are contained. Two types of NMR generally spectroscopy are we are doing which characterize the organic structure. One is called the 1H NMR determine the type and number of hydrogen atom in a molecule, another one is called the 13C NMR which determine the type of carbon atoms in the molecule. What is the source of NMR? Radio waves have long wavelength with low energy and frequency. Interaction of low energy radio waves with a molecule changes the nuclear spins of some elements including 1H and the 13C. Principles of NMR, it comes from the spin of nucleus, nuclear spins generates magnetic field without applied and external magnetic field. The nuclear spins are random in directions. When an external magnetic field B0 is present, nuclei align themselves either with or against field of external magnet. The emitted radio frequency is directly proportional to the strength of applied field, that is nu is equal to gamma B0 by 2 pi, where B0 is equal to external magnetic field experienced by proton, gamma is the magnetogyric ratio. So, now what are the components of NMR? First one is called the sample holder, that means glass tube which is 8.5 centimeter longer and 0 0.3 centimeter in diameter. Next is the permanent magnet, it provides the homogeneous magnetic field at 60 to 100 megahertz. So, in this particular case you can see this is the sample tube which is number 1, then we are having that magnet that is number 2, then magnetic coils, these coils induce magnetic field when current flow through them. Sweep generator to produce an equal amount of magnetic field pass through the sample itself. So, we are having that radio frequency generator over there. Then we are having that radio frequency transmitters, radio frequency transmitters that produce a short powerful pulse of radio waves. Then radio frequency receiver, it detects receiver radio frequencies emitted as nuclei relaxes of lower energy level and last one is the readout systems, a computer that analyzes and recorded the data. What are the applications? It determines the biomacromolecules in aqueous solutions under near physiological conditions. It determines the residual structures of unfolded proteins and the structures of folding intermediates. It determines the chemical properties of functional groups in biomacromolecules such as the ionization states of an ionizable group at the active sites of enzymes. In enzymology, to study the conformational dynamic process in enzymes and for biological activities of enzymes. What are the advantages of NMR? Helps in 3D structure determination of proteins and enzymes. It can investigate dielectric constant, polarity and any other properties of solvent. It is a powerful tool in research of polymer chemistry and physics. 
Solid state NMR has potential for determining atomic resolution structures of domains of membranes proteins in their native membrane environments. Tool for detection of interior water and its interaction with bio macromolecules. There are certain disadvantages also good for more accurate determination of structure, but not for availability of higher molecular weight. Resolving power of NMR is less than some other type of experiments like XRD. Cannot determine the degree of probability of being a protein segment in given conformation. Cost of experimental implementation is increasing with higher strength and complexity of determination. Now, the next one is called the Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy was discovered by Sir C. V. Raman in 1928. It is a spectroscopic technique used to observe vibration, rotational and low frequency modes in a system. Commonly used in chemistry to provide a fingerprint by which molecules can be identified. So, what are the principles? It relies on inelastic scattering or maybe the Raman scattering of monochromatic light usually from a laser in visible near infrared or near ultraviolet range. So, incident beam are coming and it is falling onto the sample itself, then the lights are scattering. So, laser light interacts with molecular vibrations, photons or other excitations in the system resulting in energy of laser photons being shifted up or bottom. Shifted in energy gives informations about the vibrational modes in the system itself. So, in this particular case, we are having that Rayleigh scatter some same wavelength as incident light and the red color is the Raman scatter that is the new wavelength form. Components of Raman spectroscopy, first one is called the laser source. Use lasers because their high intensity is necessary to produce Raman scattering of sufficient intensity to be measured with a reasonable signal to noise ratio. Because intensity of Raman scattering varies as fourth power of frequency, argon and krypton ion sources that emit in blue and green region of spectrum have an advantage over the other sources. Next is the sample elimination system, liquid samples important for biological and inorganic systems and its studies dealing with water pollution problems. Solid samples, Raman spectra of solid samples are acquired by filling a small cavity with the sample after it has been ground to a fine powder. Polymers can usually be examined directly with no sample pre-treatment. Gas samples, gas are normally contained in glass tubes 1 to 2 centimeter in diameter and about 1 millimeter thick. Gases can also be sealed in small capillary tubes. Then Raman spectrometers, similar in design and use same type of components as classical ultraviolet or maybe the visible dispersing instruments. Most employed double grating systems to minimize the spurious radiation reaching the transducers. Photomultipliers served as transducers. Raman spectrum, it is a plot of intensity of Raman scattered radiations as a function of its frequency difference from incident radiations. This difference is called the Raman shift. Application of Raman spectroscopy used in chemistry as vibrational information is specific to chemical bonds and symmetry of molecules. In solid state physics, it is used to characterize materials, measure temperatures and find the crystallographic orientation of a sample. Used to discover counterfeit drugs without opening their packaging and non-invasive monitoring of biological tissues. Investigated as a means to detect the explosives for airport security. Used in medicine aiming to development of new therapeutic drugs in the diagnosis of arteriosclerosis and cancer. Next one is called the small angle x-ray scattering or maybe the SACS. It is a small angle scattering techniques by which nanoscale density differences in a sample can be quantified. The elastic scattering of X-rays wavelength generally 0.1 to 0.2 nanometer by a sample which has inhomogeneities in the in nanometer range is recorded at very low angles typically 0.1 to 10 degree angular range. How to determine the angular range? Nanoparticle size distribution, resolved size and shape of macromolecules, pore size, 
characteristics distance of partially ordered nanomaterials. So, generally the Sachs instrument is looking like this. Sachs is a biophysical method to study the overall shape and structural transitions of biological macromolecules in solution. It provides low resolution information on shape, conformation and assembly state of proteins, nuclei acids and various macromolecular complexes. It is capable of delivering structural information of macromolecules between 5 to 25 nanometer of repeat distances in partially ordered systems of up to 150 nanometer. Conceptually, Sachs experiment is simple. A sample is illuminated by collimated X-rays and the scattered radiations is recorded by a detector itself. So, collimations. So, monochromator X-ray is going, this is the sample containing nanostructures and then we are having the detectors and it looks like this. The intensity is expressed as a function of the scattering vector Q resulting from a photon of wavelength lambda scattering of the sample at an angle to theta. Scattering pattern contains the information on the structure of the sample itself. Guinier plot, Guinier region in small angle X-ray scattering defines the radius of gyrations Rg and the forward scattering intensity I0. Radius of gyration, distribution of the components of an object around an axis. What are the advantages? Sachs does not require crystalline analytes. Useful information for both glassy and crystalline analytes may be obtained with these techniques. Due to the small wavelength of probing radiations that is 0.01 nanometer to 3 nanometer, information is obtained in the useful range of 1 to 1000 nanometer. Of course, there are certain disadvantages also, cost of SACS is high, uses synchronotron radiation for high resolution research applications, it provides much lower resolution allowing you to see the overall shape of a protein molecule, but far from atomic resolution. What are the applications? Determine size of particulate systems like colloids, globular proteins, etc. Inhomogeneous structures such as polymer chain, distorted crystalline structure like crystals of soft matter gives information about macromolecular folding, unfolding, aggregations and the different conformations. So, now we have come to the last part of this particular lecture. Now, we have to summarize the whole uh, lectures. So, in this particular lecture, we are discussed about the nanotechnology, which is nothing but the essence of molecular synthesis, manipulations and manufacturing. Nanomaterial characterization is necessary to establish the understanding and control of nanomaterial synthesis and applications. For characterization of nanomaterials, size, shape, structure, chemistry, crystallography, etc. are the parameters to understand. There is integration of different techniques for better understanding of the particle characters. AFM with modern probes for attachment with fluorescent particles is used to study red kinetics and the degradation kinetics. Thank you.